Hello, welcome to 3.4, concavity and the second derivative tests. Physical way of picturing concavity is a cup. Think about a cup. Look, here's a container holding pens. If the cup is held up with the opening up, it is concave up. This can hold the pens. If the cup is held with the opening down, it is concave down. All those pens would fall out. In the concave up position, the cup will catch water. In the concave down position, the water will roll off the cup. So a function follows this model over the specified in intervals. So the graph over the interval will catch water. If you can pour water and it catches like in the basin, that's concave up. But if the graph over the interval will repel water, it's concave down. Definition of concavity, let f be a differentiable function, be differentiable on the open interval i. The graph of f is concave upward on i if f prime is increasing on the interval. That is f prime. If the derivative is increasing, it's concave up. If the derivative is decreasing, it's concave down. So what does it mean to have the derivative increase and have the derivative decrease? How do we know if the derivative is increasing or decreasing? Is there a tool to determine if a function is increasing or decreasing, have we learned something about that? Hmm. What do we know about that? Well, when is the function concave down? It's concave down. I'm going to uh, probably skip all this, but. Or when's it concave up? It's concave up when the first derivative is increasing. When's it increasing? When the first derivative is has a positive that's derivative. So if the derivative of the first derivative is positive, it's concave up. No, concave up. If the derivative of the first derivative is negative, it's concave down. That's what we're talking about here. That's what I was writing here. So to summarize this, we have the test for concavity theorem. Let f be a function whose second derivative exists on the open interval i. If f double prime, that's two little tick marks there, of x is positive on all x in the interval, then the graph of f is concave up. If the second derivative is negative, then the graph is concave down. So for example, once is find the intervals over which the function f of x equals x cubed minus 6x plus 12x. 6x squared plus 12x is concave up and concave down. So our first derivative is going to be 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. And the second derivative is going to be 6x minus 12. So 6x minus 12 equals 0 means 6x equals 12 or x equals 2. At x equals 2, the second derivative is 0. So given to the shape then, we have intervals. From negative infinity to 2, and then from 2 to infinity. Let's get our test value. So a value less than 2 is 0. A value bigger than 2 would be 3. So let's see. Put 0 in here. 6 times 0 is 0 minus 12. So our f double prime of 0 is negative. Put 3 in here. 6 times 3 is 18 minus 12 is positive. So f double prime of 3 is positive. So conclusion, that means it's concave down in this interval. And this one is concave up. So from negative infinity to 2, it's concave down. From 2 to infinity, it's concave up. You get kind of a visual on this. This is a cubic function. It's going to be coming up and doing this, and then goes up like that. So here at 2, it goes from being concave down to concave up. That's what it's saying.
going to go on to example two. Okay, find the intervals over which the function f of x equals x plus 1 over the square root of x is concave up. So our f prime of x is going to be I'm just going to give it to you x minus 1 over 2 times the cube root sorry, square root of x cubed. If you want to see the Look at the notes on how I work that out. And our second derivative is going to be negative x plus 3 over 4x to the 5 halves. So where is negative x plus 3 equal to 0? That's where negative x equals negative 3 or x equals 3. We also have x equals 0 as a critical number because it makes the function the second derivative undefined. It also makes the first derivative undefined and it makes the original function undefined. So I, th I don't think we're going to get much from x equals 0, but let's just see. So we have our interval. We have 0 to negative 3. And we have negative 3 to infinity. Sorry, 0 to 3. Now we know it's not going to be less than 0 because of the square root in the original function. That's not in the domain. So let's get a test value. Let's go with 1 and 4. F double prime of x. This is going to be negative 1 plus 3 over 4 times 1 to the 5 halves. That's going to be positive. F double prime at 4 is going to be negative 4 plus 3 over 4 times 4 to the 5 halves. That's going to be negative 1 on top, so that's negative. So our conclusion, we're concave up and we're concave down. So from 0 to 3, concave up, and then from 3 to infinity, we're concave down. Notice here we didn't have the zero in. It's not in the original function, so we can eliminate it altogether. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next page. Feel free to pause if you need to. Point of inflection, also known as an inflection point. That's a point on the graph where the concavity changes, either from being concave up to concave down, or concave down to concave up. Points of inflection, if C f of C is a point of inflection of the graph of f, then either f double prime of C is zero, or f double prime of C does not exist. Oh, I have it here, at f x equals C, okay. So, example three says, find the points of inflection and discuss the concavity of the graph of the function. So we just saw this one a couple of examples ago. f prime of x, 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. f double prime of x was 6x minus 12. And we had that, okay, 6x minus 12 is zero, so 6x equals 12 or x equals 2. So we know that f double prime of 2 equals 0. So from example 1, we 
we are concave up. I think we're concave up from. Um, look that up again. It's concave down first of all, from negative infinity to two, then concave up from two to infinity. Now, f of two, that value where the second derivative is zero, is going to be two cubed minus six times two squared plus twelve times two, and that's going to be eight. So our point of inflection is going to be 2 comma 8. I know you hear the term point of uh, your inflection in the voice, how that, what is the inflection? Now, if you talk monotone like this, that'd be very just monotone, or if you talk like this, it would point of inflection when something changes. You say, so, and I don't know what would happen next, and then and it gives you more interesting characteristic to your uh, speech. And that's the same type of thing here, it gives you some changes. Changes concavity, concave down to concave up. Okay, so note that the converse of the above theorem is not necessarily true. It is possible that for the second for the second derivative to be zero at a point that is not a point of inflection. So be aware of that. You've got to test those. And this leads us to the second derivative test. Which says. Let f be a function such that f prime of c is zero and the second derivative of f exists on an open inter interval containing c. If the second derivative of c is positive, then f of c is a relative minimum. This is a cool test. If your second derivative is positive, so this first derivative, f of c is zero. If your second derivative is positive, you have a min. If it's negative, you have a max. If it's zero, the test fails. You must use the first derivative test. I think this is a very useful tool. There's uh, one person I know very well um, who would rather just do the first derivative test and see if it goes up and down, things like that. I like this. Gives you some, a quicker way to get it. So, example four. It says find all relative extrema. Use the second derivative test if applicable. So our first derivative it's going to be 4x cubed minus 12x squared. So if we do 4x cubed minus 12x squared equals 0, we could factor out 4x squared times x minus 1 is 0. So 4x squared is 0 means x is 0. And x minus 1 equals 0 means x equals 1. Our second derivative it's going to be 12x squared minus 12x, or 24x. So our second derivative at 0 is going to be 12 times 0 squared minus 24 times 0, so that's 0. The test fails here. The second derivative at 1 is going to be 12 times 1 squared minus 24 times 1. That's 12 minus 24, it's negative 12. That's less than 0, so that means that x equals 1 is a, means that, what does it mean? It's concave down, so you have a maximum. So being concave down, being negative means concave down, so we have a maximum. Oh, oh! I made a mistake. This should be a three. Okay, x minus three, so three. Let's try this with three here instead. Okay, twelve times three squared. That's nine. Twelve times nine is one hundred eight. Twenty-four times three is seventy-two. And that's going to be 36. That's positive. So that means we're concave up. So that's a relative minimum. So if we do f of 3, we have 3 to the 4th minus 4 times 3 cubed plus 2. And this would give us negative 25. So that's 
3 comma negative 25 is a relative min. So you're prob probably wondering with um, what about the zero? What about x equals zero? We'd have the interval from negative infinity to zero and then from zero to three, let's say. Let's get our test value. Negative one and one. So f prime of x, so f prime of negative one is gonna be into this one here. That's gonna be negative four minus 12. That's gonna be negative. Put in the one. 4 minus 12, that's still negative. So this is neither a max nor a min. No change of inflection there. Sorry, it's a... Uh, not a max or a min. Okay. Let's go on to our last page. We have another example to do there. So feel free to pause this if you'd like. Beam deflection. Like saying, like in you know, my British accent, Mr. Data, set on deflector beam deflector beam, you know, from Star Trek. Yeah. But I bet no one watches that anymore. Great show. Great show in the 90s. Okay. The deflection D of a particle beam of length L is D equals 2x squared, 2x to the fourth, minus 5LX cubed plus 3LX squared, L squared X squared, where X is the distance from one end of the beam. And the value of X that yields a find the value of X that yields a maximum deflection. So L is just the length of the beam. So our D prime. It's going to be 8x cubed minus 15lx squared plus 6l squared x. And that could be written as x times 8x squared minus 15lx plus 6l squared. If you factor out the x. So you could say x equals 0. And you could say uh, 8x squared minus 15lx plus 6l squared equals 0. So x would be equal to the negative of negative 15l plus or minus the square root of negative 15l squared minus 4 times 8 times 6l squared all over 2 times 8, so x would be 15l plus or minus the square root of 225l squared minus, so 4 times 8 times 6 is 192l squared all over 16, so x would be 15 plus or 15l plus or minus the square root of 225 minus 192 is 33l squared all over 16. So we have x equals 15l plus, this could be 15l plus or minus l times the square root of 33 l over 16. So 15l plus the square root of 33, um, sorry, l times the square root of 33 over 16 and 15l minus l times the square root of 33 all over 16. So we take our second derivative, we have the critical values. Second derivative, that's going to be 24x squared minus 30lx plus 12l squared. 
no, just six x six l squared. So we take the second derivative of 15 plus square root of 33 over 16, all that times L, because you can factor L out of the numerator. And you would end up with 24 times 15 plus square root of 33 over 16 L squared minus 30 L times 15 plus the square root of 33 over 16 L plus 6 L squared. And that's going to give you 198.9 L squared. And because that's positive, that means it's concave up, so we have a minimum here. The second derivative at 15 minus the square root of 33 over 16 times L is going to be 24 times 15 minus the square root of 33 over 16 times L. We square that, minus 30 L times 15 minus the square root of 33 over 16 L plus 6 L squared. And that's going to give us negative 3.23 L squared and that means it's concave down so we have a maximum here. So our max deflection X equals 15 minus the square root of 33 over 16 L, which is approximately 0.578 L. And that'll do for 3.4, concavity in the second derivative test. Thank you. Send me your questions.